Hi, my name is Garrett. I'm a project consultant with August Roofing, and today we're gonna to be looking at some of the inspections I've done. First one that we're looking at here is in Simi. We're over here on a roof in Simi Valley. I just wanted to show you guys, this roof is 37 years old, and you know, it's held up remarkably well. So, you know, as I mentioned, the, the roof was 37 years old, which is a really long time for a tile roof. Generally, the tile roofs, the underlayment, itself is the waterproofing component and they last about 25 to 30 years. This one is kind of a, a special case and you don't see a lot of broken or cracked tiles. The sealant on the pipes actually looked okay. And so that's generally the kind of stuff that I'm looking for in an inspection. Any broken tiles is kind of an indication that the underlayment's been exposed to the sun, which is what really kind of wears down and causes it to peel away. and creates areas where water can get underneath. You know, it's held up remarkably well. The only thing that I've noticed over here, you have some tiles that uh, don't match. So, you know, some repairs done in the past. Generally, whenever we do replacements on tile roofs, as long as the tile can be matched as close as possible and we can find tile with the same uh, profile, like the same width and they all have these little tracks on it. So as long as they can interlock properly. What we'll do is we'll actually pull up the tiles, replace the underlayment, which is the actual waterproofing component, replace any flashings, and then relay the tiles that are currently on the roof. And when we do that, there's always an element of breakage. You know, we account for say about 10% of the roof, just tiles that are gonna be broken, whether it's existing or as we're taking up the tiles and some might break in the process. And so we need to have extra tiles so that we can put those in an inconspicuous area on the roof so it's not glaring from the street view so typically kind of on the back side of the roof in this video i noticed a section that had some tiles that didn't match which was kind of a clear indication that they had some repairs done in the past you know in this scenario she likely had a leak around the chimney and so to address that one leak they just kind of did a section of the roof i always say it makes sense to do repairs if the leak is kind of more of an isolated incident and it's still early on in the roof. If I was out there and her chimney was leaking and it was year 30, her roof has still kind of reached that expiration date. And that's why she's seeing that leak. The only reason it's by the chimney is because that's where the water kind of has to work around a little more. And so repairs are practical. And if you need to save um, on cost of the expense of like having to fix your roof, say you weren't planning for it, um, a repair can work. It's just if the underlayment itself is expired, I wouldn't recommend doing a spot patch because it's work that's going to have to be redone whenever you replace the roof. Anyways, the only way to kind of do it to where it's not something you're going to have to redo is if you're doing a partial. And basically what a partial would be is a full section of the roof. So stopping at the peak or the edges or where the gutter line is and basically making it to where this whole section of the roof is done. And later on down the line, you could take on the other section and not have to redo any work on that partial section. And you can kind of look over here. First thing I noticed was just, you know, the wood rod on the trim here for the chimney. So just to talk about this wood rod on the chimney, the way it works with chimneys is you know, we kind of don't want any exposed wood on a roof. And it kind of, it applies to the same for the exterior home in general. And so what's kind of going on here is she has a corner there where the paint's starting to peel off. And as the paint peels off, it, the wood itself is kind of losing that protective element. And all the water is dripping off this metal cap that's on the chimney. And so it wicks down and it's basically where these two pieces of wood butt together. And so water's kind of seeping into the seams, essentially where these two pieces of wood connect and it's kind of getting soaked up by the wood. And so, yeah, it starts the rot in that area. And what we want to do is stop the rot before it spreads. And so if you notice little things like that, this itself, it could potentially be protected by painting it, repainting it could, um, seal it up essentially again as long as it's not rotted to the point where it's dry rot. Dry rot is basically if you're touching the wood and it's falling apart and crumbling, you know that it's lost its integrity and needs to be replaced. And coming down, these tiles aren't laying flat and they're barely secured down over here next to this tile pan. 
So I just wanted to show kind of where you can see some water staining. So these tiles, they just, they lift right up. Tiles on your roof, they're all fastened down with nail heads um, at the top part. And basically there's, there's no exposed nail heads on a tile roof because they all overlap. They have that three inch head lap up on the top of the tile. The fact that I was able to come up to this tile and lift it up as easily as I was is definitely not good. One way that this could happen is that the wood could be rotted and it's basically the tile, I mean the nail itself has nothing to really hold on to. Another thing is this is right by where it meets um, a wall. And so there's a, a metal flashing that tucks underneath at the chimney called tile pan. And basically when you have tiles that are right next to it, you can't drive a nail directly through the flashing because that flashing is there to divert the water around the chimney. This could have been glued down at some point with some sort of you know, adhesive, or they could have even just put it back into place and just kind of left it as it is. It's not an incredibly steep roof, so maybe they weren't too worried about it. You know, I don't want to speculate, I guess, what they did essentially, but the main thing is this tile's completely unsecure and it could be slipping down over time. And so definitely not what you want to see. And you can see underneath, there's a bit of water staining on the, on the underlayment right here. And the, this little kick out for the pan is all smashed down with the tile laying on it like that. Basically the profile of tile pan is it's like an L metal and it has a little spot that I called it a kick out essentially. Um, it's a little lip on the metal itself that goes up and it's supposed to hold any flow of water within that flashing essentially. It can't go, come up a lot obviously because the tiles need to still lay flat. What happens is you either get debris build up in the flashing and that causes the water to kind of spill out over the pan um, and get to the underlayment. And as water is running down the underlayment constantly, it's either gonna wear down the underlayment to the point that it breaks through or it's gonna find um, like a nail head essentially and start to wick through that uh, area. You could see the debris underneath the tile and then also just the fact that the tile is kind of pressing down onto that lip, causing it to essentially bend down and create less of a barrier. It's just how it's spilling out over in this area. So with roofing, it's all in the details and you can see right here, it's just one small detail that's causing water to get to the underlayment and cause, you know, cause it to prematurely age, essentially. Look out for the pan, it's all smashed down with the tile laying on it like that. And then this whole area, this whole section comes up. And you can see just a bit of, it's a little too dark. There's a bit of staining right down here on that underlayment. So this area is kind of a one of concern. The reason this area is an area of concern is that it's right where the chimney is, which any sort of penetration on the roof blocks the flow of water. And we can see that there's actively an issue with the flashing that's gonna, if it's not an issue right now, it's gonna cause one down the line. And there's an area on the corner here where the tiles aren't laying flat either. Whole, whole roof's a 412 except for this one run down here, it's a six. The whole roof was a, a 412 pitch, which is basically how steep it is. It's a rise over run type of metric. So like every 12 inches, it rises four is essentially. And so your standard roof has like about a 412 pitch. She has one section right here that's a little steeper. The homeowner has one steeper section right here, which is a 612. And so it's not so steep to the point that it requires battens, but it is steep enough to where the gravity itself will cause the tiles to slip if they're not um, fully secured in there. As opposed to by the chimney, there was no security, but the tile was really still in place because it's not gravity, it's not fighting gravity as hard. So I'm over here on the corner of the roof and you can see these tiles have kind of slipped down over time. And so I'm just gonna really pull here and this tile comes right down. You can see here, no underling right here. It looks like it's completely broken through. Just to stress, you know, the importance of the underlayment. The underlayment on a tile roof is really the main waterproofing component. All roofs kind of have three components and the underlayment on a tile roof handles two of them. 
the three components is that there's something that essentially holds everything together. In this case, we're looking at a number 30 paper-based underlayment. So it's felt paper. And then there's asphalt on that paper. So that paper gets dipped into asphalt and that's what makes it waterproof. Over time, you know, with the sun kind of beating down on it and just with age, it's gonna lose that asphalt and essentially lose its waterproofing component. The tile is there to protect it from the sun. It's the reason why maintenance is so important on tile roofs. If you have tiles that have slipped or broken over time, if you leave it there long enough, the sun will eat away at the underlayment and cause it to break down and eventually create an area that's not protected at all. You can just see the, the wood exposed right there. And so with the number 30 paper-based underlayment that they have, you can tell it, it peels up. It's kind of like, um, peels up like a potato chip essentially once it loses the asphalt. And so it doesn't do a great job of laying flat. That's why whenever we install a roof, we use a fiberglass based underlayment and it's SPS modified. So it's more waterproof. You know, when you look here, you see a number 30 paper based underlayment. It's interesting because this area has the tile back in place, but the underlayment's entirely gone. It might just be the age with this one. Realistically, um, 37 years is like I said, I mean, it's really beyond the expiration date, but you know, we could, we can see essentially the wood right underneath. And so that's why underlayment's very important on tile roofs. Yeah, that's, that's no good. This is a point of water entry for sure. Luckily it's on the ship lab on the eve. So you can see the water stain on the paper itself too. So you know that water's collecting in that area and then the wood has all its seams right there. And so it's, it's likely starting to seep through, starting the process of having the wood rot out. I said here it was uh, the shiplap. And so shiplap's basically like a one by board that you see typically on the edges of roof, like where uh, the roofs where you see the overhang. So an eave is basically where your gutter is mounted. So that's like a the, the horizontal where it meets the wall. But basically the fact that I could see the shiplap underneath tells me that this leak is occurring, but it's not in the interior attic space. It's happening at the overhang on the roof, not in the home itself. So sometimes, you know, we have leaks going on that we're not even fully aware of yet. And so that was 100% this case. There's a big overhang on this house, so I won't be coming inside right there, but yeah, this is definitely an area of concern. I mean, this underlayment's held up remarkably well for 37 years, so there you have it. So at that point I was done with my inspection and I went down to the homeowner and explained everything that was going on with their roof and went ahead and showed them some photos to give them the full picture. So if you're interested in having a roof inspection done, give August Roofing and Solar a call and one of our project consultants will come out and give you all the information you need to make the best decision for you and your family. So give us a call today.